Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Let's Talk ETC. So I know smart contract development is something that's core to Ethereum Classic. That's uh, important, and that's what a lot of people are interested in. They're either doing it or a lot of people want to learn how to do it. So I have a guest that's going to discuss smart contracts with me today. I have Julian Klepach, and he's put together a course wonderful course on smart contracts and dApps, which he's going to talk about, as well as smart contract development in general. So welcome, Julian. Uh, hi, Christian, and thanks for inviting me to the show. Sure. So so you, you obviously have a lot of experience in developing smart contracts. So why don't you kind of share some of your background so that for people sure. can know you? So I have an engineering background. I have a master of engineering from a, an engineering school in France. And just after my master of engineering, I decided that I actually wanted to work in finance. So I also uh, studied for a master of finance. And, and after that, I got my uh, first job in, in finance where I was financial engineer. So financial engineer is someone who creates financial products. And um, I did this for a couple of years and then I got bored of finance. So I, I thought of what I, I want to do, I wanted to do after that. And then I decided that I wanted to do programming. So I started to learn programming, the basics. I started with PHP and WordPress, like really simple stuff. I got my, my first client, my first gigs. And very quickly, I switched to JavaScript and, uh, and Node.js. And I did this for, for a few years, and, and I really loved it. I was able to live wherever I wanted. So I lived the digital nomad dream, and that was pretty awesome. I um, also have some business experience because uh, I also used to run an e-commerce business for about two years. So that was pretty cool. And then in 2016, as I was reading Hacker News, I saw a link uh, mentioning the DAO hack of Ethereum. And this link really intrigued me. So I clicked on it. And that's basically where I started to enter the whole rabbit hole of blockchain. So for the next six months, all I did was read about Bitcoin and blockchain and, and Ethereum. And, and I became totally hooked and very quickly, I decided to focus on, uh, on Ethereum because as a developer, that's obviously the most interesting platform because you can build application and not just do transaction like on Bitcoin. And one thing that I find really difficult was to, uh, the, I found that the, the learning curve was really steep and that the, the, the tutorials were quite outdated and not that great. Uh, the quality of the development tools at that time was not that great. Like, for example, with Truffle, the framework for a smart contract and DAP, the features used to break very often from one release to the other. So I realized that there was a, a problem at that time. And, and very quickly, I got my first uh, gigs for blockchain project. So the way I found those gigs was uh, really simple. I just walked in some uh, Ethereum meetups and some guys came and talked to me and, uh, and I became a developer for a couple of uh, ICO that way. And um, so I did this for a while. And at the end of, uh, of last year, I met the two co-founder of my current company, uh, Landing Block. So Landing Block is an exchange for borrowing and lending crypto assets. So for example, if you have a Bitcoin and you want to lend it to someone to, uh, to get, get a sort of interest rate like you would have for your saving account. And so, yeah, I became the first employee. Um, I, I built the initial prototype in a uh, in couple of, of months. And now we have a, a full team with about uh, 20 people. Uh, we've got, I think, uh, 10 developers. So I've been doing this full time for, for this year. And in parallel to this, I've also started a YouTube channel, which is called Eat the Blocks, where I teach how to build smart contract and dApps on Ethereum. Can you, can you, I, I didn't quite get the, the title was what, 
eat the eat e a t eat, eat the blocks. Eat, eat the blocks. Yeah. Okay. The name, okay. The name is a little bit funny, but basically, I didn't want to find something to to generic. So right. I want something a bit fun, which is easy to remember. So right. yeah, eat the blocks. Oh, and, another thing. I noticed something interesting. You said you started in the financial sector and you got bored. But and then you found a way to combine right, <laughs> your, your new in cryptocurrency with Ethereum with with something financial. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's 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 very true. So I think blockchain kind of make finance cool again, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, and also, it really it really changed the the whole way I I see finance. Like for example, our company uh, Landing Block. So although we are catering to corporate investors, uh, the whole way the company communicate and, and behave is much more open than what I, I experienced before in the world of banks. Uh, we, uh, we, we have some uh, open source code, for example. Uh, our communication is, is, is much better and the general spirit is much better. So I, in these conditions, I'm okay to work in the finance in the context of, uh, of blockchain. Uh, so yeah, that's a big difference compared to the traditional world of finance. Okay. And so j just to be clear, the company is, it's a bank or it's, it's competing with banks trying to, or what, so, so what he's trying to do is to basically bring securities lending to the, the world of, uh, of blockchain. So now in traditional, um, uh, uh, finance markets, such as the, the stock market, for example, what happened is that if you want, you can uh, uh, lend your stock to someone and okay. that's useful for people who want to do short selling. So people right. who think that the, the stock is going down. Okay. And that's also useful for a whole part of the finance economy that a lot of people don't know about, which is derivatives. So options, for example, and that's something I used to do in, uh, in, my, in the first part of, of my career in the bank. So. So option that complicated financial instrument which rely on uh, on short the ability to short sell and currently we cannot do this in the world of blockchain. So a company like Landing Block would allow this and potentially bring a lot of money into um, into the the world of blockchain. Okay, so you got interested in cryptocurrency. You got interested in in technology like Ethereum. Ethereum Classic after the DAO hack, and then so you're doing it full time, and you notice that there was something missing in the the tools documentation, and so tell us about this this uh, course that you developed. Yeah, sure. So, so basically, at the beginning of the year, so as I was uh, working on my channel, uh, it the blocks money contacting me and and offer me to. Uh, to to create this uh, to develop this course together and and I accepted and so so I basically in this course what we do is that I, we first introduce um, Ethereum like the Ethereum virtual machine how it works uh, gas uh, so gas is the the unit that we use to pay for smart contract execution um, uh, what are smart contract what are decentralized uh, applications so. So there is a first chapter on a, a general introduction of, uh, of Ethereum. And then during the, the second and the third chapter, we quickly move on to doing actual project. So we, we start with, um, with Remix, which I will talk just after introducing the course. So Remix is, is this online editor for Solidity smart contract. And then we move on to, on, on the next chapters with a real decentralized application to finish for the final project by building a decentralized exchange, so which is often abbreviated DEX. And this is the most popular kind of dApps on Ethereum in 2018. So, so if I hear if I understand your so your course allow teaches people how to create a decentralized exchange. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. So, and to be more specific, a decentralized exchange for ERC twenty tokens. So, ERC twenty tokens—they are the, the the tokens that were, that were created by ICOs. So, 
if you've been in the world of uh, Ethereum yes. and blockchain, you've probably heard. I, I'm sure a lot of listeners know this. All right. So, 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 just to be clear for anybody that's listening, and and in case they haven't figured this out yet. So, even though his class is called Ethereum DApps in Motion, by the way, if you do a, a internet search for Ethereum DApps in Motion, uh, Julian's class will come up. But the the all of what he talks about also applies to Ethereum Classic. And there's also some introductory videos on YouTube. And as you, as he said, Eat the Blocks uh, is another video series that he has. Now, so tell me, at, since you're in the thick of it, tell me kind of, can you give the list? So the, for the people that aren't that familiar with smart contract development and are thinking maybe I want to kind of look into this, can you kind of give people some pointers and kind of introduce us to what are the major tools that they should remember to, to look into? Sure. So if you never, uh, if you're a first timer, you never heard of smart contract and solidity before, what I recommend you is to follow a, a tutorial called crypto zombies. So it's the most, uh, the most, uh, easy, the easiest tutorial that you can find on, on topic. So it's a, it's a fun tutorial you can do like maybe in, in one or two hours. It will give you the, the very basics. And just after that, you, uh, what you want to do is to create some smart contract using a tool called Remix. So Remix is an online code editor for Solidity. So Solidity, which is the main programming language for writing uh, Ethereum smart contract. And so Remix is very easy to use. Uh, it's online. You don't have anything to install. And what is really good with Remix is that uh, you don't have to, uh, to, to integrate all the, the different tools together, but everything is already included in this text editor, in this code editor. So it's, it's actually more than just a code editor. It's actually what we call an IDE, so integrated development environment. Uh, but it's more simple to use that other IDE on, on desktop, for example. And actually, in uh, in my course, I teach how to use uh, Remix and what is the the general uh, workflow. And you can basically create smart contract in like just ten minutes. You can deploy your your first smart contract with with Remix. So I think that's pretty cool for beginners. Okay, so definitely look into Remix after looking at a tutorial such as Crypto Zombies. Mm -hmm. All right, and are there other useful tools that you find you can't live without? Yeah, so Remix is good for A, beginners, and B, uh, to be used as a playground when you, you, would, you want to try out some things in Solidity. But a smart contract in itself is, uh, is not useful. It has to be attached to a front end, and the combination of both is called a DAP or a decentralized application. And when you want to do this, Remix is not enough, and you need to use development tools that on your own computer, not on, on a browser. And for this, the most popular framework is called Truffle. So Truffle is basically a CLI, so command line interface, that is um, shipped as, a, as an uh, NPM package, so very easy to install. And with it, uh, you can easily deploy your smart contract to a local development blockchain on, on your own computer. And you can also do testing. Um, and you can also integrate your smart contract with, uh, with a front end. So Truffle is a little bit more involved than Remix. So I don't recommend this for a beginner. Uh, but once you start to feel a little bit more comfortable with Remix, you can check out Truffle. And in, um, in my course, I also introduce Truffle and explain what are the, the main feature uh, step by step. And, and, um, and yeah, like, like this is the tool that I use every day for most of my project. So, okay, so we, you can begin to learn development on Remix, and then you deploy with Truffle, which is a more advanced tool. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. And as I briefly mentioned on Truffle, you can also test your smart contract. And that's extremely important because smart contract, contrary to traditional web application, once they've been deployed, you cannot change the code. So it's extremely important that your code doesn't have any bugs or, or vulnerability because if there is a hack, it will be very difficult for you to, to change anything. Okay. And, and so, okay, so Remix, Truffle, and then are there any other tools you want to mention? Yeah, so actually uh, Truffle is very convenient because it, it, um, it combined for you different tools, but under the hood, there is another tool that you, you need to be aware of, which is called Ganache. So Ganache is a tool to create a local development blockchain on your computer. And so with Truffle, you don't have to manage uh, Ganache directly. So that's very convenient. But if you want, you can also connect a Ganache to Truffle manually if you need more flexibility. And so Ganache is a tool that has two parts. So one part of Ganache is a pure CLI, it's a command line interface. So um, it's written in, uh, in Node.js. So it's very easy to install. It's much more lightweight than using an Ethereum client like a guest, for example. Um, and so, so Ganache, contrary to a normal Ethereum client, will have a feature called auto mining. So, which means that you don't need to set up mining nodes and a whole uh, like normal blockchain infrastructure, uh, infrastructure, sorry. But basically, every time you send a transaction to Ganache, it will uh, auto mine the transaction and add a block to the blockchain, which is great for development. Uh, another thing that Ganache will do is it will create 10 addresses already pre-funded with some Ether. So we are talking of fake Ether here. So of course, it doesn't magically create some Ether. Otherwise, developer will be, will be really rich. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so Ganache is, is for testing. For serious testing. Yeah, for, for developing. And so yeah. there is, as, as I said, there is a CLI version of Ganache. And there is also a GUI that you can connect to the CLI. Uh, so with the GUI, you can uh, see visually the state of your blockchain. So what are the blocks? What are the transactions? And that's an, a nice tool for developers when, when they develop smart contracts. Okay. And, and so, so, so Remix, Truffle, Ganache, is there a lot of other tools that they need to know about or is are we getting close to the end of the most important ones, the major ones? So those are really the most uh, important one. Uh, there are some a new category of tool that we see being developed more and more, which are called security tool. One of the most famous one is called uh, Misrail. Uh, so this tool will basically analyze your smart contract and tell you if there are any securities vulnerabilities so usually these tools, they need to be connected in a, what we call continuous integration system. So if you're a single developer working in small team, you might not have heard of what is continuous integration, but if you're used to working in bigger team, you probably know what it is. So it's basically um, a, a process where every time you push your code somewhere, then you run some, some tools uh, to, um, to, to make sure that the quality of your code is, is good. And one of the and one of the in the case of smart contract, then you you want to run a security analysis tool like Misrail in your continuous integration uh, pipeline. Okay, so Misrail to to find potential security problems with smart contract code. Yeah, and also uh, maybe a, a last one. So I wouldn't say it's a tool; it's more a library. So it's called uh, Web3. So Web3 is a JavaScript and Node.js package where uh, that allow you basically to communicate with an Ethereum client. So you don't strictly need Web3 to develop your own DApp, but uh, Web3 makes communicating with your Ethereum client much more easy. And one thing which is extremely convenient in Web3 is that you can, um, you can give it a sort of representation of your smart contract that we call the ABI. And it basically describes the function that can be called 
uh, from the outside the smart contract and Web3 will dynamically create an object that you can use to communicate with your smart contract in a very easy way without having to deal with the low level details of the uh, Ethereum virtual machine. Right, right. Now, I, I've had a lot of fun with parity nodes and writing Python scripts to, to talk using JSON, JavaScript ob object notation with the parity node and, and using the Web3 interfaces. So yeah, that's, that's good stuff and a lot of fun. Oh, cool. So have you used the Python framework uh, in back of a status? And no, I haven't used that one. Is it that what what's what what's that one again? What's the name of it? Uh Embark, so E N B A R K and it's basically the second most famous framework for Spark contract and DAP. It's written in uh in Python. And yeah, like I haven't checked it out yet, but yeah, I like to to have a look. Oh, oh. And, yeah, okay. and so and there is still actually another one um, also from Truffle. Oh, yes, that's something I haven't mentioned. So basically, Truffle is not just the Truffle framework, but it's also a suite of tools. So, so Truffle is the, the, the first tool in this suite, but the second one is Ganache. So Ganache is also developed by the Truffle team. And recently, they released another tool, uh, which is called Drizzle. And Drizzle is a front-end framework uh, for you DAP to easily um, maintain the state uh, of in the front end of your DAP and keep it in sync with your smart contract. So it's especially interesting if you use it uh, in a React or Redux uh, application. Um, yeah, so that's something that I've started to look at and I will create some tutorials about it. Okay, great. So for the people listening, you've got a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, uh, tools that you could look into that are come recommended. Now, what do you think you about, I don't know if you've heard of Open Zeppelin. It's a library that's been audited for security. So the idea is that by reusing Solidity code, you might be able to avoid a lot of problems, right? If you use widely peer reviewed code, are you a big fan of, of using libraries? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I know Open Zeppelin, and it's especially useful for the economy part of your DAP. So if you use any token like ERC20 or ERC721, you don't want to code yourself the logic of the token, but you absolutely want to reuse a contract that has been created by uh, Open Zeppelin. Uh, so yeah, definitely a big fan of, of this library. And uh, recently, they've changed totally their, their repos that released Open Zeppelin 2.0. So uh, you guys might want to have a look at that. And also, there is another part of Open Zeppelin that many people don't know. And I need to do more research on that, but that's interesting. That's called Zeppelin OS. And the idea of Zeppelin OS is instead of having you deploy your, your own smart contract, you would use one of their deployed smart contracts. Okay. Yeah. So, so, it, so you use a, a, a equivalent contract yeah. they wrote. Okay. Yeah. Like they deploy the library uh, themselves, and then you connect to this smart contract, knowing the address of the smart contract. But that that save you from deploying yourself the the smart contract. So you save some uh, some cost, and for the overall Ethereum network, that's also a huge uh, gain in uh, in storage um, in, in storage space because instead of having one thousand instances of the same library, we just have one. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. So instead of everybody, uh, yeah, instead of adding everybody adds copies of the same open source library, you can do the reuse. You can yeah. just reuse the already installed code. Yeah, that's I could see that. That's the next step, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the equivalent, right, of a Windows where they go DLL, dynamic link library, right, where you don't even, you, you just read, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly, yeah. Or even if you see, like, the client-server model is, is the same thing, like, instead of, like, shipping too much logic to the front end, then you keep it on the server, and, and the same server can service many clients. Right. Now, I want to ask you, so you, you're familiar, you, you've shared these tools that, uh, that are great for smart contract development on Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. What do you think 
how, how would you rate the quality of the development tools? Because I, I'm thinking like, for example, with the Java developers for many years, they've used Eclipse, which writes a very super sophisticated IDE. And then Microsoft with their C++ has a very sophisticated uh, IDE. Does, does, does Solidity development, smart contract development have a lot more room to grow or how does it compare with, when you've used compared to what you've done in other languages? How does the state of the art look? Yeah, so for sure, like coming from other languages, uh, it's, it's not as good. Uh, I mean, that's that that's for sure. But people need to realize that already a lot of effort has been done. Like when I first look at the, the tools in 2016, I think at that time, Truffle was at that version two or three. And as I mentioned before, it used to break very often from one release to the other. Uh, if you fast forward two years, then now Truffle is much more robust and uh, big bugs are much more rare. Uh, now that the team of Truffle is, uh, is also bigger, uh, they start to have connection in the enterprise world. So recently uh, they, they got some sort of partnership with Microsoft Azure and Azure now proposed some integration with Truffle. Um, yesterday, I also read that uh, AWS want to launch a service specific for Ethereum blockchain. So now we see some enterprise player being interested in Truffle. Uh, I know that Truffle is also used for uh, Hyperledger. So Hyperledger is uh, a sort of version of Ethereum for enterprise users. So yeah, for, for permission blockchains, it's a consortia ma managed by the Linux Foundation that uh, supports a lot of players. Uh -huh. Yeah, Hyperledger. Yes, they, they do run an Ethereum virtual machine port that so you can execute smart contracts on Hyperledger. That is true. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, seeing all these enterprise player coming in is a good sign. Uh, also, if you look at uh, Ganache and which is a uh, with this uh, GUI, it's uh, it's pretty good. Um, what else I really like? Uh, Solidity, I think, uh, is becoming better. Um, they and now we uh, there is also Viper, so this is an alternative uh, language for for smart contract. Uh, which is a little bit uh, newer, uh, but um, that looks like a uh, Python. Uh, so we are, you have actually some choices if you want to develop smart contract. There is not just Solidity. Um, and what else? Uh, Remix. Yeah, so Remix has done some progress. Uh, is not as polished as other tools, but I believe that in six months, one year, it will start to be really good. And recently, they've introduced a new feature where you can have plugins in Remix. So I think that's very interesting. Okay. And uh, so going with my question of, uh, you know, how it compares to other languages, is there anything, let's say that that's embarrassing, that's, that's missing or that you really wish somebody would develop for the smart contract development community? I think what we need is we need a desktop version of Remix which is a very polished and which is as snappy as some uh, code editor that I've written in C++, like Sublime Text, for example. Okay, so more sophisticated IDE, basically. Yeah, so uh, this, this being said, I don't think there will be anyone who will build a product just for that. So what is more likely is that we will see a very sophisticated Ethereum extension for editors such as Sublime Text or Visual Code, uh, yeah, Visual Code Studio, for example. Okay, and I suppose somebody could even make an, an extension for Eclipse if they really wanted to, right? One of these established IDEs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and and talking about this, uh, there was uh, a project that I saw on uh, on one of the Ethereum Reddit recently, which is somebody created a what we call a server language for solidity and um, so this basically is, is like a standard that was created by microsoft for developing uh, code editor extensions and so this technology will allow a lot of developers to develop extensions for any code editor so that will help a lot for creating tools around solidity 
Oh, that's interesting. A standard for ex for new language extensions. So you could easily extend your favorite I editor and IDE with whatever. Yeah. You okay. Oh, that's, that's, I like that. Okay. Um, so, um, why, why don't we, why don't we end our discussion of general smart contract development by what do you think is, what, what's your prediction or what do you see in the future? So clearly the tools will keep getting better. Uh, do you like, do you think solidity is going to continue to dominate? Do you think Viper is going to become steal some market share? Do you have any predictions or any sense? What's coming? Yeah, I, yeah, I, for Viper, uh, there is one variable that will be interesting to monitor. So the, um, what is interesting with Viper is that it's easier to do formal verification. So formal verification is the sort of ultimate security measure that you can take on smart contract because that allow you to prove mathematically that your smart contract is secure. Uh, and because of the, the way Viper is built, it's much easier to do it with Viper than with Solidity. So if some people manage to build good tools for formal verification for Viper, that could be a very strong case for this language. Uh, otherwise, if this, this, this is too slow, then Solidity is going to continue to win, I think. Okay. Now, what do you think about... So, okay, so Viper might might get an advantage because of security concerns. What about using even more sophisticated languages like functional languages, right? Some kind of like something like Haskell or. Yeah. Some so, kind of, yeah. What do you think? So actually uh, this might be more possible in the future because the Solidity team is working on an intermediary language which is called uh, YUL, I believe. And that would be a compilation target for many higher level language. And actually want other teams such as Viper to, to target this intermediary language for, for the compiler. So once this intermediary language is, uh, is working well, then we might see uh, other higher level uh, language compile into this and we'll have much more choice. Okay, yeah. So. Solidity was chosen, it was developed by the original Ethereum team, I believe, to attract new developers because, of course, it's similar to JavaScript, mm -hmm. one of them. But it, it, there's, not, there's no intrinsic reason why it's always, that it's, there's no intrinsic reason it's the best language for smart contracts, right? It, it's just, it just is based on a popular language, but it, you, you could potentially make something a lot better. Right, you'd agree with that? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that, that's definitely true. Uh, and and uh, yeah, well, I mean, Solidity. What's what's difficult with Solidity is that although it looks like JavaScript, uh, some of the rules are actually very different. So the similarities are just cosmetic, and it can be very misleading for many people. Okay, yeah, I can see that. It'd be kind of annoying if you're expecting it to be exactly like JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's really not. <laughs> right, right. So you, you, you're, you're going to keep using Solidity. You don't have any plans to switch to Viper or even a different smart contract languages, smart contract language in the near future. No, no. I, I don't have any any plan to do this. Uh, where I would like to invest more time is uh, studying other projects, especially around uh, scalability. So for example, uh, there is one famous project which is called uh, Loom Network, which is a layer two uh, scalability solution that allow DAP developer to run that DAP in an environment where users don't have to pay for transactions. And so that is huge. And, and I believe that for the, for the next year, it's probably going to be one of the most interesting thing to follow. Okay, so so there for the people that are interested that they can look into that. All right, great. So um, is there anything else you want to mention about your class, the Ethereum dApps in, in motion? You've given us a pretty good uh, introduction, but is there anything else you want to mention about yeah, that? Yeah, so I briefly mentioned that um, we're going to build a decentralized exchange for ERC-20 token, and I'd like to briefly introduce what is a decentralized exchange. So, okay. so currently, uh, most of the liquidity 
for uh, crypto asset trading goes to centralized exchange. So we're talking of exchanges such as uh, Bitfinex, for example, or Binance. And the, the problem with this is that it poses a big security problem because they're they are like a sort of honeypot for hackers. And there have been many hack in the past in many exchanges. So the value of decentralized exchange is that they prevent this sort of hack because there is no central point of failure. The whole exchange run into a smart contract. And if the code of the smart contract is right, it has no bugs, then the, the exchange is basically unhackable. Um, this also uh, offer an, another advantage, which is it's very easy for, um, for tokens to be listed on decentralized exchange. Whereas if they want to get listed on centralized exchange, uh, if their the project is too small and there isn't a lot of liquidity, the centralized exchange will not accept them. Okay. Yeah. And so for people that are interested in decentralized exchange, so that's, that's really interesting that, that your, your class walks them through how to build something. Yeah. So, so, uh, so basically there are, um, there are two kinds of, um, of decentralized exchange. So the one that we will build in my class will have the order book on, on the smart contract. So the order book is a sort of database where you have all the record of people placing their orders. Uh, so it means that every time a user wants to send an order, he sends his order to the smart contract and also he has to pay for, for some transaction costs. So, so it's, it's not free. Uh, so the fact it's not free, it's not, it's not good for users, but uh, it's better uh, to create a, a decentralized exchange this way because it's a little bit easier to have everything on a smart contract. And other kind of decentralized exchange, such as uh, IDEX or Ether Delta, they change this a little bit in that the order book is not on the smart contract, but it is outside the smart contract. So when a user wants to create an order, it doesn't have to pay anything. It just creates a transaction, but without broadcasting it to the real network, this transaction is aggregated on a central server. And when the central server can match to order, then it broadcasts them to the smart contract where the, the transactions are actually executed. Uh, but this saves a lot of transaction costs to, to users. Um, so I've decided not to, to take this option for the course um, that, that I teach because it's really, it's really too complex for, for a course. But still, basically what I teach is like the first step of building a DEX. And what I just explained is if you want to take it even further, then that will be the, the the second solution. Okay, very good. All right, so I think we've we, we've covered. You've introduced your class. You've recommended some tools for people getting started in smart contract development. You've also talked about Viper and some other uh, things that you think are going to happen in the future, like the tools getting better. Uh, and so, did I? Did we miss anything, or is that all? You know, that? I, I think I think we're good. Okay, wonderful. So I'd just like to thank you, uh, Julian, for sharing your, your knowledge with us. And uh, once again, his class, Ethereum Daps in Motion, and his YouTube other uh, series, Eat the Blocks, you can find that on YouTube. So thank you. Thank you again, Julian. Yeah, thanks, Chris. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.